All right, so I just woke up, got a lot of hate comments saying reverse psychology from Desert Eagle, Philly Mike saying that, oh, I don't know why you're so down. The Sixers team has a chance. Well, in my opinion, they don't. And here's the thing. I literally, people ask me, why am I a Debbie Downer for these, for these teams right now? You guys have to understand I like four teams. I like the Eagles, Sixers, Flyers. My baseball team is the New York Yankees, which happen to be the worst baseball team in all of the major league right now. So, yes, I'm going to be a Debbie Downer because none of my teams are good. None of them. All right? Now, people are going to say, why, do you, why don't you think the Sixers are good? Well, in my definition of good is championship material. Now, I went to the game against Los, uh, Los Angeles Clippers last night. It was a good game. But the fact of the matter is, we were up by 23 again. That game should have got put away early. But we have shooters like Mike Scott out there who can't hit a three to save his life when he's wide open. We have Matisse Teibel, who had one of the best blocks I've ever seen, running from maybe about 10 yards away in a span of like two seconds to block a shot, which was phenomenal. But the guy can't shoot. You have Seth Green out. You have Tobias Harris out. You need Tobias Harris in the playoffs. And you, you, don't, you don't only need him. You need him to be consistent. Because he's going to be facing some pretty damn good teams. And I'm not taking anything away from the Los, Los Angeles Clippers last night because they won seven straight going into that game without Kawhi Leonard. That's a pretty damn good team. But what I'm saying is the content creators of Philly, and I, I hate rambling on about this because it's sickening, but they're feeding you wolf tickets. That's what they're doing. I'm coming out of the, uh, the Wells Fargo Center thinking it could have been a loss. You know, we were up by so many damn points, and it was a close game at the end of the game. They could have hit a buzz beater to go into overtime. It should have even got that close. We have a knack for some, I don't know what it is. All Philly teams have a knack for not playing to the final whistle. We have a knack for it. You know, we just take our foot off the gas. Ben Simmons is, a, you know, just whatever. Um, Joel Embiid, I find myself rooting for Joel Embiid to win the MVP more than actually the Sixers going far into the playoffs. And it's weird because I'm the kind of fan that's realistic. I don't want to get my hopes up. I've had that happen to me way too much in my life. And I'm only 28 years old. So I, I find myself rooting for JoJo because JoJo is the best player in the league. And what's going to happen in the playoffs is they're going to isolate him. They're going to double team him. And then you're going to have to have Danny Green, Seth Curry, and fuck, Ben Simmons even shoot. Is that going to happen? Are we going to outshoot these teams in the playoffs like the Brooklyn Nets, the Milwaukee Bucks, the Los Angeles Clippers, the Lakers? I don't think we are. I don't think we are. And people want to say, oh, well, we beat a good team last night. Yeah, if Kawhi Leonard's in that game, we lose that game. And we're at home. This is what I'm saying. I don't like to feed false hope. I don't like to do it. Because to me, if you give someone false hope and then at the end of the season we don't get there, that person that you fed that false hope to is going to feel like shit. You know? I don't like to do that anymore. I used to do that when I was younger. I don't like to do that. And then people get on me for doing it. They're like, oh, you got to believe in, believe in your teams. I believe in my teams when they're good enough to believe in them. The Philadelphia Eagles in 2017, prime example. I knew that team was gold after that field goal was made by uh, Jake Elliott. I knew that team was gold. Especially when they beat the shit out of uh, the Arizona Cardinals. It was like 45-7. to 7. We always lose to that team. And we kick the shit out of them. I knew that team was gold. I knew they were, they were destined. But the Sixers team, they're good. They're very good. But they're not good enough. And this is why I go to the games. Because you can see everything at the game. You can see how defense is going. You can see how offense is going. You can see the coaching. I saw where Doc Rivers was sitting down most of the game. And Ty Lue is just standing up the whole game. People are going to be like, what does that even matter? Well, if your coach is standing up the whole game, they're coaching 24-7. They're telling you what to do. They're telling you to get back, go back to the basket, box out, rebound. They're telling you what to do. And I don't even think Ty, uh, Tyron Lue is that good of a coach. Doc Rivers is just sitting on his ass. And I love Doc Rivers. But all these things that you see in the game, it's like it, it all adds up. When you're up 23 points and, you're, and your coach is sitting down, what kind of examples, uh, example does that set? You know, it's, it's all math. It's all fundamentals at the end of the day. You know, and this is why people talk shit about Doc Rivers. 
because when he's up 3-1 in the series, he chokes it away. He won one title in 2008 with the Boston Celtics with a dynamic all-star team. He's got to be a better coach. He's got to be there for his players, man. He's got it. And I like Doc, but I totally see where the choking comes from. You got to be vocal. You got to be a coach that's there throughout the whole game during the playoffs. You have to be. And sitting, sitting down for the majority of the game, I didn't like it. I'm being completely honest with you. There's a lot of wrong things with this team. Um, but we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong. But I don't know. With that said, I'm getting out of here. I got a lot of stuff to do. But uh, have a great day, guys. Bye.